How are you doing this morning? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let's see, two, one. All right, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or wherever you are in the world. Thank you for tuning in to episode six of Jigs and Puzzles with yours truly, Ivan Temelkov. Today, I'm really psyched to have Darius Oliver join me because this guy literally blew my mind away from what I saw online. And I really, really wanted to share this with you guys. A couple of things. If this is your first time tuning into the show, this show airs every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I have to forewarn you about the scan light that's directly above my head because I'm trying to block it as much as I can so it does not deteriorate the stream. With that being said, good morning, Darius. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing great. Um, I'm excited, um, you know, excited to kickstart the day. This is an awesome start. You know, talk to great people. And, um, you know, and I appreciate you having me on your show. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's start off real quick. You know, let's tell the viewers, who is Darius? What's what's your story? Give us a little bit about your background and, you know, how did you get to, you know, what you're doing today, which is numerology. And by the way, I'm absolutely psyched to hear about what you're doing with that. So who I am. I'm Darius Oliver. Um, my oh, it's raining outside. Can't go out there. Um, so I'm <laughs> Darius Oliver with Divine Numerology, as you guys know and as you've heard. How I got to where I'm at, man. I was, um, I was. I, of course, I didn't start out like this. Where I really got my original, my first interest in this was, um, I was raised in a very religious household. And it was really a lot about the Bible. It was, I mean, of course. Mm -hmm. And it was the Bible, things that I learned from there that really um, set my foundation. But I didn't learn about numerology too deep until I got into network marketing, until I got into my first business. My mm -hmm. business mentor, he showed me how to use these numbers in a way that um, would help me build teams. And help me yeah. um, to build people um, according to their strengths, emphasizing those and mitigating the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the biggest value I saw from it was that um, it helped me to understand myself. And at the age that I was at, when I found out about it, man, I just had a lot of questions. Turned me on to this book, Life Purpose, Life You're Born to Live by Dan Millman. And it, you know, I it just. It blew, it blew my mind. It was, uh, it was incredible to me how accurate and how on point it was. I just kept uh -huh. studying it, you know, and it's, then just, I just kept studying it, man. I joined different sales companies, different marketing companies. I, the religion I was in was actually Jehovah's Witness. So mm -hmm. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. And, um, you know, so I had tons of experience going door to door and talking to people and, and expressing myself, but now it was different and, you know, I'm using it for a different, completely different, um, thing. And, sure, sure. you know, original you know, being raised Jehovah witness, it's a very, it's very, um, they have certain standards. They have certain, um, ways of believing that were not harmonious with, with what, you know what I mean? With that, with a lot of different thoughts and teachings. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you, you changed religions or left Jehovah's witness. Is that kind of what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say since you was, you were raised as a Jehovah's witness? Yeah, I was raised, um, raised around it, meaning that there was times when we weren't fully devoted to it weren't fully practicing and I've experienced occasionally, you know, I've experienced what it feels like to celebrate Christmas, have my birthdays, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But when I got into high school, then I got really serious about it. So when you see me doing these videos on YouTube about numerology, like, um, oh man, number five is freedom and discipline. Three is expression and sensitivity. Before I was doing all that, man, I was doing that with the Bible. I was like, man, Psalms uh, 83, 18, this verse verse here, they used to call me, back in high school, they called me Bible boy. 
And uh, okay. you know, they had that was one of that was actually one of my nicknames, Jesus Man. And um it was just because I was very passionate about it. Sure. Um you know, it's just something that naturally I'm into deep things like that. And so I didn't leave it well, yeah, I left it. But I didn't so here's what let me I'm taking a seat real quick. Sure. So in my case, it was along the lines of um, just realizing, like, you know, I mean, they have, they have a certain way of, of doing things. And I was about 21 when I moved out of my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And the reason I moved out was because, um, you know, I wanted to go whitewater rafting and my mom, um, you know, wasn't cool with it. But I decided sure. respectfully to go anyway, in respect, you know, because I wanted to have fun. It was a company trip, you know, my network marketing company. It was a prize and I had earned it. And so I'm like, you know, I worked hard for this. So I want to go. Sure. So when I got back, hey, Darius, you can move out if you want now because you can make a decision to do that. So I moved out, got my place that time at that time that I'm like, well, hey, man, you know, I want to go and live, live life. I want to experience things. I want to feel what it feels like to, you know, be in a relationship. Not that you can't do that as a Jehovah witness, but it's just different. Right. right. You know, right. so you had so you had some religious barriers, you know, you, you were trying to overcome. You had a lot of limitations, you know, growing up with, with the Bible. You didn't you didn't feel like, you know, that that was the religion for you. And. I definitely don't want to, you know, bring up the topic of religion as much, but really talk about what was that experience like for you is feeling like, you know, it wasn't something that you were truly, you know, uh, uh, believing in and you really wanted out of that. What, what did that feel like to, to you? I mean, did you did you have a hard time kind of emerging? You said you moved out of your house at the age of 21. Uh, what did that feel like? What was that experience like? Well, it was all new, man. And uh, the what you had mentioned first about being in it when I, you know, I didn't want to. I had, mm-hmm. I had, I really did. I really loved it, and it set an incredible foundation for me, Bible related. Sure. Um, it just came to a point where my values had shifted. Um, moving from it, you know, was tough emotionally, only because you know it just was. But I spoke to one of the overseers that I trust I said hey man I'm going in another direction and you know he was like hey we know we may not agree we may not see the same way but I respect your decision you're being straightforward whenever you want to come back just let us know boom just easy like that then I just went went about my way it wasn't like Darius how dare you leave us you know it was none of that man it was just respect yeah Um, yeah I got no I got no no complaints on that um, then I just went about my way and studied things that I was interested in, and numerology became that. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, used my knowledge, certain, you know, certain things I knew of the Bible to assist me with numbers. The Bible's full of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so then going down, uh, developing, you know. Like I said, that company, it was your health, that network marketing company I was in. Yeah. Maybe you heard of it, maybe not. Um, but, yeah, man, I did a lot of traveling with them. I made some really big decisions because at that time, I was learning about numerology, how it related to me first. Me, I'm a life path one. One is all about confidence, creativity. It's about taking the risks in life and doing, you know, doing the entrepreneur thing. So that means, you know, I had a lot of lessons to learn re- around that. You know, that eventually led to me leaving California, moving up to Philadelphia, moving up to okay. Boston, um, where I met, you know, I met Jessica in, Bo- in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. You know, all that, it just, all the risks. But this whole time, dude, like I'm studying numerology and like I'm living it, bro. Like I'm living it. I'm learning about these birth yeah. cycles gradually. Yeah. I figure out, oh, man, I can decode people's names all oh, with their birthdays. What? Are you serious? So then I'm yeah. like, oh, man, you know, it tells me about people. Um, you know, it's like, oh, it tells me the strengths and the weaknesses. Dude, I can use right. this in business. I'm helping out colleagues and uh, 
you know, they're asking me tips and pointers. How do I do it? Eventually, I built a, a, a reputation. You can ask anybody in Boston, anybody in Philadelphia that I worked with. They still know me that, to this day. Yeah. And they talk about it. You know, I got an award for top leader. You know, just wow. reputation for, um, you know, being able to build consistently, just have these large teams, man. And, you know, the secret sauce was the, how I applied. The key word is applied. Yeah. The knowledge yeah. of numerology to what I was doing. You know, I mentioned a couple of interesting things that I wanted to latch on is this. And, and I want to talk more about numerology and what numerology is. So, you know, you were growing up being raised Jehovah's Witness. You were, you were always very devoted to, to the Bible and God and Jesus Christ. And but you didn't. You know, that wasn't something that you were all in. And then numerology just became, was that a thing of interest to you? Like you just out of the blue kind of took interest towards it. Is that kind of how you got into it? Towards numerology? Yes. Man, I love that question. Dude, ori like uh, I, the, originally because of how I was raised in my belief system, yep. I was very opposed to numerology originally. Um, I was very much opposed to astrology, anything on the spiritual, anything dealing with that, because yeah. I was taught that it was something that I wasn't supposed to mess with. Sure. Um, my business mentor, he used logic and he used reasoning. Not only did he use it, use that, but it rang. What he told me made sense. He said, hey, Darius, you're a life path one. This is what it means. He was the first one. I keep right. in touch with him and he's, I respect him. He just had a high position in his company, but he was the first one. And he said, Hey, look, this is what it means. I'm like, wow, dude, that, that actually answers some of my questions that I have. I yeah. see value in this. How can I learn more? He turned me on to this book. The one that I mentioned before by Dan Millman, yeah. the life you're born to live. I read that book. There's, and throughout my experience from that point on, you know, gradually it created this uh, cognitive dissonance because I was studying it and I'm wondering, well, you know, I'm taught that this stuff is wrong, but if it's wrong, then how come it's accurate? Yeah. Why? Yeah. You know what I mean? If this is supposed to be bad, then why am I feeling, you know, why am I learning from it? And so I would test it. I was very skeptical initially and I was, I would test it. And I would test it on different people and it would puzzle me so much why something like this is considered bad when it's just so on point, you yeah. know what I mean? And that gradually, you know, it won over my initial skepticism. Yeah. Well, you mentioned, and I want to segue into the numerology aspect and talk about, so you were talking about the Bible and how numbers have a, such a huge significance in the Bible, certain dates, and also certain projections in the future uh, as well. So let's talk a little bit about numerology. So when you started out with this, you read the book that really changed your mindset, is this that how do you explain to, to people what numerology is? There's a long way and there's a short way. Long okay. way is, I'll tell you short way first. If I know your, your name and your birthday, I know everything about you. Um, I call it counseling from within. Numerology, okay. long way is this. It's really not even that long. It's essentially the study of numbers, the study of the vibrations that we all use. We use numbers for everything. Right. We use numbers for the time, for the license plate, for social security, for um, our clock, our watches. And they're everywhere around us. But many, many times we think they only have, they only count things. Right, right. They have qualities is what we find. And that's what it is. It's being able to read the numbers associated with any event, person, place, or thing, and make connections in it that um, in, that affect our behavior and mm -hmm. our outcomes to what we do. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So let's talk about numbers is that you said your name, uh, your birthday, obviously social security numbers. Let's talk about a couple of things. So let's take my name, for example, because it is a foreign name. 
let's analyze that because I'm really, really curious. And I wanted to experiment with this by having you on is what does my name, for instance, mean? If you don't mind breaking that down. Oh, heck no, man. Uh, actually, let me just grab my little pin. Sure. Oh, OK. Let me see. I'll actually do it on this paper here where I was decode. I was doing uh, Justin Timberlake's numerology, <laughs> trying to figure, figure that out. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. man. You learn a lot by uh, studying celebrities. Sure. Um, well, not just celebrities. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, as you were saying, is this that I, I'm sure that 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 untapped information is probably very curious. You know, is this that what you find out? Because, like you said, you know, when you were growing up and you know being a being a Jehovah's Witness too, is that there were certain things that were not accepted, right? That that right. were just uh, 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 forbidden is probably the word to look for. Is forbidden, right? right. And when you got into numerology and express curiosity towards numbers, you know, everybody probably started looking at you in a very awkward way because I think in society also a lot of people are afraid sometimes to know the things that they probably don't want to know. So I think numbers really kind of exposes maybe some vulnerabilities about people that and things that they don't want to know, right? So you were right. talking about JT, you know, I mean, which, by the way, I'm a fan of him. And I think oh, he has nice. a phenomenal career and phenomenal human being, too. I mean, very, very giving, very community driven uh, also. So uh, I'm actually curious. So let's uh, let's let, let's talk about Ivan. Let's talk about Ivan's name, because I wanted to give the viewers the opportunity to sort of do your magic here by 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 taking my name and, and sort of e extrapolating it and see what we find out. All right. And uh, so I got Ivan, I-V-A-N. Now, uh, what's the middle name, Ivan? Middle initial is M as in Mary. Do you have an actual middle name or do you not want to, yeah. would you rather not give that out on? Uh, so I, I have, I have a middle name and I'm okay with, with giving that out. That's fine. Okay. It's Milkov. So it's M-I-L-K-O-V. And for the people that are probably wondering, that's an Eastern European name. <laughs> it's pretty interesting and very unique. And then last name, how do I spell that again? I, I kind of know yeah. I see it, but. Sure. It's T as in Tom, E as in Ellen, M as in Mary, E as in Ellen, L as in Larry, K as right. in Karen. So I got T as in Tom, E as in Ellen. Mm -hmm. And then K. Uh, M as in Mary. Okay, M. E as in Ellen. E. L as in Larry. L. K as in Karen. K. O as in Oliver. Oh, okay, O. And V as in Victor. V. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So, Ivan, let's see. Let's see. Now, there's multiple ways of calculating this, but mm -hmm. and I'll show you. I'll show you two. So the way that I do this, how I do it in the first place, I'm doing it while I'm calculating um, and I'm writing this as I'm talking. So essentially every letter has a value. OK. OK. Um, we use and it's so interesting you say Eastern European. So there's uh, one of the modes I use is the Eastern numerology also, but I also okay. use Western. It's different systems. Okay. Um, and they, these different ways of using this, uh, the numerology shares with us, hold on one sec. The different systems show us that not that one way is right above another, but that there's many different ways to get to Rome. Mm -hmm. And it shows us that a diamond doesn't only have one side, but it's multifaceted. Okay. And if we're all diamonds, which we all are, doesn't that, exp when you say that, I mean, doesn't that make sense why we have so many contradictions as humans? That's why we have so, point. so many paradoxes? Case well, in every point, diamond is different, right? So every right. diamond is different. Every diamond is unique. So uh, that's an excellent point. 
And, you know, when I first started out, I started only at with uh, the birthday, right? That was all I knew. And then, I, you know, before I found out you can decode people's names. Um, hold on one second. 33, 46. 50, 70. Um, you know, when I found out you could decode people's names, then I start seeing all these differences. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I started seeing all these differences and contradictions and it, it's, you know what I mean? When I was able to, when I only knew the, how to decode the birthday, I would be able to do some pretty good readings, but man, my stuff, my knowledge was incredibly limited. I would only be able to tell you one facet of yourself and depending on how much you resonated with that, depended on how much, how accurate you perceived that reading to be. So sure, sure. say, for instance, you have a life path, um, you know, like a life path four. that means that you're going to learn lessons related to structure and discipline. But if you haven't learned those lessons related to structure and discipline, you're going to be on more on the opposite end. And you're not really going to relate to what I have to say, because there's still that part. There's still another part that's operating, you know, in the, the five energy, which is freedom and discipline. I mean, freedom and sometimes lacking discipline. Okay. And so it'll have accuracy, but only to one part of it. But then when I was able to break it down more, I'm able to pinpoint other parts of you um, as okay. I'm, you know, as I'm doing that. So I'm, I'm almost done with uh, with your last name. Five, 10, 16, 25. So uh, for, first... So I just, I, so I get you, uh, your first name equals one, two, four, okay. five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. First name equals one. And what that means is one is the number of confidence and creativity. It, oops, I'm, uh, the thing was bending down. One is the number of confidence <laughs> and creativity. Okay. And so that's the, first, that's the first name. Uh, is yes. it just Ivan? Equal, it, it equates to the number one is the way I was Correct. hearing you explain it, right? Okay. Right. And here, let me, I'll explain it a little bit better. In this case, I, if you, if you have a pen and paper, you can always write it too. And if you're, um, I'm not seeing if your guests are having any comments, but if they do, man, I'll, sure. I'll not mind answering questions. Sure. Um, okay. So your first your first letter is nine because it's I. Okay. I is the ninth letter in the alphabet. So uh, when we when we come across the nine, I mean when we come across the I, I convert it to nine. V is the twenty second, so I'm gonna convert that to twenty two. A is one. That's you know of course one, and N is the fourteenth letter, so it's fourteen. When I add all, so I convert it to numbers, I add 9 plus 22 plus 1 plus 14, and I get 46. Okay. Your first name specifically equals 46 when I add it, right? But if with the point of numerology, I'm supposed to, while 46 has meaning, add each digit until I get one single digit. In this case, 4 plus 6 is 10. That also tells me a layer of who Ivan is, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to say, okay, well, what's one plus zero? One. That's right. the final digit that I've arrived at, right? Okay. So one, that's a very basic, um, you know, very basic vibration to start with. And it's basic in this, not the number, but just it's a single digit. Single digits, always basic, very simple. It means that, as your name, it makes you the one who's entrepreneurial. It makes you the one that is direct. Hey, man, let's get stuff done. Let's do this. No beating around the bush. Come on. We don't, you know, one uh, is an executive number. One is like the yeah. CEO. And it, okay. it, um, at the, it, it has natural confidence, natural creativity. But at, at times it's challenged. Hold on, get my phone charged real quick. At times it's challenged with mm -hmm. really um, having 
that consistent confidence, you see, that's, mm-hmm. that can be one of the challenges. One second, I'm going to take a quick step away from it so I can grab sure, my sure. Uh, phone charger. Sure. I'm just going to set this down real quick. All right, everyone, we are just uh, awaiting um, Darius to, to come back. But we're talking about numerology, and he is breaking down. Uh, I, I took my name as an example, and we're breaking it down to determine the significance of letters compared to numbers and how to break those down. Um, I think that's that's a lot of people are probably wondering what that really means and what the significance of it is. And I am pretty excited to have Darius here in a couple of moments to break it down further so we can really extrapolate the meaning of it. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to give you guys an idea of how numerology plays a factorial role in just about everything. As Darius was mentioning earlier on is we use numbers to, to count things, to keep track of, of everything. And what's really interesting about Darius's approach is this that he also creates a perception around our, our individuality uh, as human beings. So uh, very, very interested as soon as we get Darius here uh, in, to hop on in a second is to uh, talk about further the significance of the different letters and, and how to extrapolate that, that further. So uh, there you are. Uh, for the, again, for those of you that are tuning in maybe for the first time, just want to let you know that show airs Monday, Wednesday, Friday on my Facebook page as well. Where you can catch new episodes. And there we go. Darius is back. Awesome. So uh, you made some real interesting points that really got me thinking while you were away. Is So, you know, you said that, that you know, combining all the letters and then getting to that, to that integer ultimately – is, you know, defines kind of the, the meaning, I guess, behind uh, a name, right? Which is... Yes. Right. So uh, what's oh, really okay. interesting about that is that you, you were talking about being very, very entrepreneurial. And I'm looking at the significance of this. And this is why I was so curious in, in having you break, break down my name is because it also gave me an indication of the course of path in my life. You know, as someone who was raised as an Eastern European, my father wasn't an entrepreneurial until, you know, we moved to, to the United States, uh, which mm. for him, it was in the 90s. And, um, you know, but for me, since childhood, I, I knew that I wanted something you know, right. at a very younger age. I was always that kid that was trying to make bad deals on the playground or to sell something, to exchange something. So I think at a very early age, I had that curiosity. And at the age of 13 or 14, when we moved to the United States, is when I really started expressing a strong level in curiosity. Everything from dismantling uh, computers and technology and ju- just finding things that were curious. But I never really, even through my pro- professional career, which was mainly marketing 12 years, I never truly had a full sense of ownership. I didn't feel uh, happy. I, di- I didn't feel like... Uh, I, I had what I was looking for. And then when I really pursued all in, you know, the entrepreneurial journey is like you were saying, one is CEO, one is entrepreneurial, one is being confident, you know, one being direct also, you know, being yeah. a very direct yeah. individual. That That is absolutely my personality because I am that type of guy. And, and this was something that used to bother me so much, especially in my professional career, is this that, you know, people would beat, beat around the bush especially in the marketing industry, like they just, they were uncomfortable. You could tell when they were uncomfortable, whether, you know, it was a sales guy or, you know, working with a client or communication or whatnot. And, you know, my personality is always like, hey, let's get this done. No beating around the bush. You know, here's what I can do. Boom, boom, boom. So when you were talking about these things like direct, confident, CEO, entrepreneur, like all these things really started to come to my mind. And I think for a long time, what was really ironic about what you said, one, is is that there was a fear factor, I think, in me. And I was afraid, you know, I I just thought that if I didn't take certain steps, like, you know, uh, go do the things that I wanted to do, which was, 
you know, passionate about helping people succeed, basically. And, you know, I was afraid. And so when you were saying all these things, you really resonated with me on a personal level. You really got me thinking about the significance of it and what it truly means, not only in business, but in life. Uh, and something that we really, you know, talk about on the show is this, the life, family, and, and business aspect, and, and basically being a lifestyle show that sort of encompasses all of this. So there, this had a much bigger significance, and I, I'm excited you not to steal your thunder uh, to keep oh, going no. and tell me, you know, what the significance is of some of these other letters uh, as well, because uh, I'm just curious in knowing, and, and I wanted to share this with with the viewers and people that are going to be watching this on the replay uh, as well as what the meaning of of these letters are, and perhaps even reach out to you for a numerology reading because like you said is numbers is numbers is sort of a currency i think in a way even though it's not it's not like cash or like money which is used for exchange for goods and services but numerology is like you were saying this is where i think it's so so interesting is this because we count using numbers we we, we use numbers in everything we use in measurements um in many different fields and industries right um as well uh you know numbers are a huge part uh, uh, in the financial industry, for instance, obviously, you know, everything that has to do with, with dollars and cents. So let's keep going. You know, you said one, I'm curious to know what the last, what's the significance of the last name? Oh man, dude, that's so crazy. You asked me. Um, and I think <laughs> you're going to like this. And uh, right. for, the, for the, for if, if you think, let me see, let me just make sure, just make sure I got it. Yeah, man. If you think that I'm BSing you, you go ahead and add this up yourself. Okay. Um, okay. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus 16. Dude, you know, um, your last name equals 31. Your last name equals 31, and uh, JT is born on the 31st. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm just, I, I just happen wow. to have. I just happen to have his, uh, and he's born not just in the 31st, uh -huh. but he's born on January 31st. So the number one and your first name equals one. Well, here's something. Okay. So my birthday was on the 20th. My birthday was uh, two days ago. Um, so happy belated actually, birthday too, by the way. I'm so, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so keep going 31 JT. I know we got sidetracked right. 31. What does that mean? All right, man. So look, check this out. So your last name tells me a lot about you. Uh, it tells me about you, but it also tells me the, about the family dynamics, some of the family values that were held down and, and, pre, and valued, appreciated. Mm -hmm. 31 is, uh, it's what we call a compound number. Of course, you know, it's the three and the one. Three is expression and sensitivity. Uh -huh. It's a very artistic cipher. Okay. 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 And when we have it combined with the one, it's again, we have that confidence, that leadership, that, you know, going out and doing it, your independence. So okay. it's, it's related to expression done independently, independent expression. When we add three and one, we get four. So four is structure, stability, process and order. Right. But now when we okay. take the 31, let's subtract the three and the one, we get two. This is cooperation and balance. So I'm throwing all these numbers at you. What does it mean? So if I'm going to put this as a puzzle, I'm going to say, well, hey, man, some of the values in the family were, you know, definitely expressing oneself and expressing your independence. Some of the challenges that may have been there was actually doing so in a way that um, was considered considerate of other people's feelings Um you know, mm -hmm. you know that. In, but it also sh some of the values that were instilled in you were hard work, consistent work, um, yeah. and work structure, building structure. What are all the things of four? Four is the four elements, foundations. Mm -hmm. um, four is a number of loyalty, organization, planning, filing, anything dealing with. Uh, with, you know, doing things in a method methodological, methodical fashion. Uh -huh. And um, it, basically giving whatever kind of guarantee you can get, whatever type of contract, whatever structure you can hold on to, use as a foundation to step on 
to um, stand up, use to get you to the next step process. That's what it was about. Okay. And this shows okay. that um, the as far as work ethic and the family, that was a very high value. Interesting. Um, so you mentioned uh, several things about so structure and process, and you, you talked you talked about values. You know, what was really interesting is this is that. I'm one of those guys, and you were talking about values, and I was reflecting on my history and how I was raised also, which was with a lot of traditional, I think, morals and values specifically. And I think for a long period of time is, you know, I think I was afraid to sort of polarize in a way and, and you know, step outside of my comfort zone, but without deteriorating from those traditional values and morals that I was taught. And, you know, when you were talking about structure and process, you know, I'm in a sense a very analytical guy also, mainly, I think, because of my, my professional career with marketing. But not only that is this I'm very appreciative of process and, and, and structure as well, like having, you know, a certain method of doing things. In fact, that's something I strive for on a daily basis, you know, not just in life, but in business also is that to have things a lot more coordinated. And when I don't, it, it, it seems like I, I feel disoriented. I feel I feel lost. I, I feel like you know I I'm not being accomplished. Uh, I'm not fulfilling my goals. Um, that I, I'm sort of stranded. And so you, when you were talking about these things, you know, I wanted to kind of compare it to you know some other people that that you have done these readings. And by the way, I'm going to have to caption the whole JT thing because that was just mind blowing. Honestly, I, 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 I got 31. I do have a quick question. I do have a sure. quick question. Um, tell me your year of birth real quick. 1980. Okay, 1980. I'm going to run that up real fast. Sure. Uh, but I didn't mean to cut you off what you were saying. No, not, not at all. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked. You know, as I was saying, I'm totally captioning the number 31 in comparison to Justin Timberlake uh, in, the, in this stream as well. Because, you know, that's, for one, that's very ironic, you know, like you said. But... Um, some of the things that we were talking about as well is, is I think, as you mentioned earlier, is this who JT is. So in essence, it's someone who's very explorational, right? Someone who right. is very entrepreneurial, someone who does like process also. Uh, so I'm really kind of running these things through my head uh, because the more and more I think about it is, you know, that is methodog methodologically uh, the way that I operate as a whole. I mean, the things that you shared – uh, literally had, I mean, you know absolutely nothing about me. And I was just mind blown that you even just by running my name and now the year that I was born to is being able to extract so much about me. So, which I think is, is, is also very questionable for a lot of people. Like you said, you know, earlier on when you were growing up is just that, you know, people refrained you from numerology because I think they were afraid of what they might discover, right? But now that you're in numerology, you know, it's 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 so interesting to see how much information you can extract about people without actually knowing anything about them, just by knowing their their names. And so how do you so let me finish about the, the year. First of all, let me know what you found about my birth year. I'm curious about that. All right. So um the reason why I looked up why I wanted to ask about that is because I wanted to get the full picture of your year your plus year the plus day plus the uh, the month. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. You so when I get that, I add up the entire value, right? So I'm gonna take the day plus the year plus the month, add it together, and I get um, the number three as your life path. When I simplify it all down to a single digit, I get the number mm -hmm. three. Okay. Um, now let me ask you this. So, JT, right? We're, we were talking <laughs> about JT. So, right. J, okay, look, so here's this. This, this is uh, your, your, well, not homework, but a little project right now. So, what, if you look at the letter organization, right, of JT, J is the 10th letter in the alphabet. Uh-huh. And then T is the 20th letter in the alphabet. So, think about it. So, okay. If we're going to add that together, we're basically, if we're going to say 10, that's 1 plus 0 gives us 1. Right. Then the, the T, the 20, 2 plus 0 gives us 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 
and that you so the initial JT equals three, which is the same as your life path three. Okay. Now, but essentially, what, how does that? What, okay, what does that make sense? Three right. is the number of expression and sensitivity. Three is one of the entertainment ciphers. A lot of very um, successful comedians like Conan O'Brien have life path uh-huh. threes. Um, Interesting. Bill, Bill Cosby's a life path three. Yeah. Um, a lot of people like Beyonce have 33s in their charts. Michael Jackson, 33s. And mm-hmm. uh, three is that number of expression. So what it will mean is, see, this is your life path. So life path is the, the lessons, influences, subjects, and themes that you're going to experience in your life. It's like your life script. So as a life path three, it means that you're here to learn how to bring joy, happiness, and love I mean, in and, and, and enjoyment, be able to live in the moment in your life, right? That okay. is not, that's not what everybody's life path is. You know, you ask people and they'll be like, oh, well, that's the point of life. You know, that's the purpose. Yes. Yes. Right. But at the same time, people have different ways of going about that. With the okay. three, three is considered to be a very um, flowy vibration. Very it's a, considered to be an easier vibration than most. Mm-hmm. And in this, because that three represents looking at life from the positive aspect, it corresponds to the planet Jupiter, which is the guru. Jupiter literally comes from the word guru um, in the ancient language, okay. which is, a, okay. a, which is um, a teacher. And Jupiter is also a number of the planet of expansion. It's the second largest um, body in our solar system, second to the sun. And, you know, that's what three is. It's about expansion. Okay. It's about expansion. Three is of the mind. So it's really going to have you be, being this expanser, this expander. But here's this, man. Some of the every one of these numbers comes with obstacles. So okay. the number, some of the challenges with the three is that it will come across self-doubt. Um, yeah. it comes across a lot of self-doubt. I mean, who doesn't have self-doubt when they're embarking upon something new, but particularly sure. with the three life path, because what it's here to do is bring it's, it's normally a very ambitious energy, very mm-hmm. like, Hey, let's go and do this. I'm dynamic. I got all this energy. I'm about expansion. Right. Um, you know, I want to do it big. That's what Jupiter does plan, you know, number three, but it's a process, man. That three goes through those periods of self-doubt, but at the same time, since it's here to manifest joy and optimism, guess what, dude? It's going to go through deep depression at times. Yeah, you know, um, so uh, something you mentioned is self-doubt. Um, I, don't, I don't know about depression and anxiety, honestly, even though I've been questionable about it several times in, in the course of my life, especially when I've had these pivotal points um, going from – you know, now being on my third entrepreneurial journey, but this is the first one where being almost two years into it is that I've put everything at risk, everything on the line, literally, both financially, family, everything in hope for success. And you said self-doubt, there has been a lot of that and there still is, which, you know, uh, like when you were explaining the number three life path, you know, it's more or less everything that I am as a person and what I strive for. But that self-doubt seems to be always there. And I think as I progress in everything that I'm doing, as I keep pushing forward, is that that self-doubt become, becomes a lot less significant. You know, it's it's sort of it's sort of diminishing slowly. Right. But it's, you know, like you said, everyone has self-doubt, right? But I think some people have more self-doubt than others. And, you know, I had a lot of self-doubt starting out, you know, this journey that I'm currently on because I I got a lot of opposition, you know, also being married once, you know, not being married for a second time. My first marriage was just a degrading experience. You know, the person I was married to, you know, she would view me as a failure every day. So it was very degrading on my conscience and was prohibiting me from, like you said, it was surprising that you said, you know, my number matches with JT's, which, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's ironic. It's kind of cliche in a way. But when you were explaining these things, I don't think they were always like they were always there, but they weren't necessarily true. Like they weren't a reality. 
Like the self doubt right. was probably a lot more evident, you know, with my first marriage when I was younger too. Uh, but now it's, you know, building up that self confidence, you know, and that confidence is probably at an all time high. And when you were saying all these things, like the significance of my first name, the last name, the year also, the JT comparison, you know, it, it really gave me a sense of validation, I think. And what's really crazy about this, and, and, and I know that the people are going to be watching this probably on the, on the replay as well, is going to wonder, well, how did Darius know so much about you? So it kind of proves, I think, the, the mythical aspect of, of numbers, right? Because I think a lot of people, when, and I'm sure you get a lot of this, when you talk to people about numerology, is that uh, they have an opposition to it in the beginning, right? They probably are a little insensitive about it. They're, they're probably very uncomfortable, uh, depending on what their comfort level is, until they really start understanding the significance, right? Because it extrapolates their character and personality. And that's what you did with me. And that's why I wanted to use that as an exercise because I wanted to prove to, to the audience and other people watching that uh, numerology is, a, is something that I think in a sense is unexplainable, yet it is. And because there's a lot of people out there that are probably questioning it. So when you talk to, you know, especially business, business owners is how do you, how do you how do you wrap around the numerology aspect of, of this? How do you explain it, the significance? Do you just focus on the business side of it specifically, or you know, do you focus on just life in general, or what's your approach to that? A lot of people coming into this uh, when you know when they're when I'm talking to a business owner, coming from the business perspective, it's you know it's more. Like, oh, okay, that's something a lot mystical, something spiritual, something I don't, you know, mo a lot of business people may not, you know, partake in the, certain ways of thinking like that. So first yeah. thing I have to do is establish, hey, look, this can be a practical use and remove the mysticism behind it and show more of the scientific aspect of it. Um, people use this in stocks. People use this in investing. Warren Buffett, he's born in 1930, born on the 30th, three, man, he's, he's rocking that number. There's certain yeah. ways to buy stocks. When you buy stocks, you, um, you look at the symbol and you also look at the name, you decode the name, you decode the symbol, you decode the numbers that are associated with it. You see how those mm -hmm. resonate with yours. Um, when I was building my sales teams, so I use personal experiences. I, sh I have pictures of my teams back when I was in the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and I use actual examples of me doing it to establish the credibility first, you know, in that person's mind, then I'm able to proceed with how they can apply it in their life. What's once yeah. I find their number, yeah. I've yeah. had people ask me, um, business questions, Hey man, which field should I go into? Which industry, which sure. industry will be more profitable for me? Um, you know, and based on whatever their sole urge number that's the number I get when I convert all the vowels in a person's name. That tells me what will bring them satisfaction and fulfillment in their life. And okay. so when I find um, an industry that resonates with that particular number, then, you know, what's, what's really crazy is I often find that they're already doing something. Maybe it's a hobby. They're already doing something along that line or wanting to yeah. like all their life. Yeah. Business yeah. people. Hey, man, I'm trying to, like a lot of my colleagues, people who've been in the business longer than me doing door to door sales. Hey, how do you do it, man? I, you know, and then they show me their list of the people on the team. I'm like, give me their birthdays, their names. I write it, convert yeah. it, show them. I'm like, hey, you know what? You're having this problem because this guy right here is doing this with this person and they're having this mm -hmm. issue here and this. And they're like, dude, do you know them or something? Did you talk to them before you spoke to me? I'm like, no, I don't know these guys. They're like, well, how would you know? I'm like, dude, come on, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I, this is what I do. Yeah. And not, not, out of a, not out of a bragging ego. No, none of that. Just, hey, look, this is what the numbers say. And you, this, evidently, your, your reaction proves that. Here, yep. well, so let's move beyond that, you know, and say, well, here's how you can change it. Yeah. Don't put these two guys together. Put this guy with this person. He's like. Well, dude, right. they don't even they don't even know each other or they you know, I never had them work with each other. How do you know they're going to work? I'm like, well, how did I know that these two were having this problem? And I didn't know that. Try it. So, and exp 
and so experiment, the and they did. Right, is what you were talking about, is just putting two people together, in essence, right, is just to create that sense of companionship. And I think the reason, so first of all, the fact that you mentioned that, it, it also proves how two people that are completely foreign, so let's say you do two readings on two different people, right, and you know nothing about these people. Maybe they just give you their names and, and their birth dates, and suddenly you're extrapolating so much information that you can, in essence, decode people before you actually know them, or you actually engage with them, which honestly, and I don't know if you get this, but do you ever get people that might ask you like, you know, Darius, what does it feel like to, to know so much about people before you actually get to know them? It's, it's kind of like, you know, like being a higher power in essence to where, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily, you know, being being a God, but he kind of feels like it because I'm sure he does to you, you know, because you, you just, you know, I mean, you can get anyone's name, you know, social media or online. Right. Uh, and just by taking those names, you can decipher so much about that individual. And then you already know what to expect. I mean, what does that feel like is to, to be able to forecast, I guess. What does that well, feel like? It it. um it's great for parties, first of all. It's great <laughs> for parties. <laughs> right. But besides that, it's it's uh it feels great in this sense that I'm able to understand people better. But even when I have someone's numbers, look, dude, I can tell you, hey Ivan, um, you know, you have this number, this number, and this number. But it may not be clear to me yet what side of that number you may be really resonating with. Yeah. I'll be able to extrapolate a lot of information. Um, but as far as how you're expressing it, that that comes through, you know, me doing it over after a while. Yeah. The, 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 I think here's the thing, man. Yes, we're able, you know, I've been doing this for a little bit. We're able to find out a lot of information. Um, but I believe that this is where the future is going. I believe that um, this this type of science, this type of technology will be used much more in the future and it will revolutionize the way we do our schools. Um, I did a lecture at, uh, my, you know what, dude, my my school district mm -hmm. invited me to one of their luncheons to give a lecture on how this can be used in the public classroom. And now some yeah, now some of the teachers are using this. Mm -hmm. um, for the benefit of their first graders, second graders, third graders, because you know what? Can you have uh -huh. a second grader accurately give, take a Myers-Briggs test or uh, do the Enneagram? No, they do not answer those questions. But yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you know certain traits or qualities or tendencies or passions that a child may grow into, it, it, um, you, it sets you as a great, it puts you at a great advantage as a teacher to be able to put them in areas where their strengths lie. Yeah, yeah. And to teach them from that perspective, it creates a, a personalized, tailored approach to education. When it yeah. comes to employment, man, if I know your numbers I mean, and I know you're a four, I'm going to put you in the filing room. I'm going to put you in the office. Why? Because I know you're going to thrive there. If you're if yeah. you're a uh, um, if you're a six, I'm gonna put you in human resources. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, right. because six is love, harmony, and balance. It's the nurture. It's the counselor. It's like yeah. the cosmic parent. So I'm gonna put yeah. you there. That's where you're gonna really blossom. Okay. It gives me a lot of. It, it gives us power to empower others. Yeah. And the value of knowing this information, it comes in my ability to share it and teach it and express it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> go ahead. Well, no, it's so first of all, uh, we're, we're kind of running at a cutoff time here, but I, I feel like this conversation could go indefinitely because I, I was as you were chatting the classroom and and this is just being a predictive intelligence kind of. Like right, is this? It is a type of science in a way of numerology and using numbers uh, to predict certain things. I mean, oh my God, I can only imagine about you know what you could do with uh, you know some some uh, some things that maybe like the Mayans you know projected that would happen and looking at some dates and uh, astrology, looking at certain numbers and dates. Oh my God, which could be completely mind blowing. But 
Um, I, I appreciate your time hopping on. I mean, this was mind blowing, first of all. And I wanted to have you on to talk about it because, you know, to show, show other people, first of all, what numerology is and uh, the importance of something like this being a predictive type of intelligence. If people want to connect with you, you know, what's the best way to, to reach out to you if they want to learn more about numerology and, and what you do? Uh, best way you can reach to me is um, my phone number. That's area code 209-898-4100. And yes, phone numbers tell you a lot about a person too. Um, <laughs> right. And if you want to get a hold of me, uh, also you can go to my Facebook, which is Darius Oliver. Mm -hmm. And I have a like page, Divine Numerology. I have a radio show, the same name, broadcast from the KXVS um, station every okay. Friday at three. And if people, hey guys, if you love what I do, and, you know, there's a way you can show it. I have a GoFundMe account where, you know, I do readings from. And if you, you know, send me okay. a little um, message that you made a donation, I will love to give you a little bonus. Whoever, you know, out there watching, you know, make a donation. Let me know yeah. you did it and I'll give you a bonus. Very um, cool. You know, so that those are some ways that you can get a hold of me. Very cool. Darius, man, it was it was a real pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. I mean, this was a wealth of knowledge that, that you shared. And uh, um, I want to make sure that, you know, people that are catching on, on the replay uh, as well is that, you know, uh, first of all, I want to caption some things as well that you mentioned because they're so intricate. And again, thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to staying in touch with you. And if anyone asks about numerology, you're, you're the go-to. I mean, you blew my mind away just by sharing some of these numbers. So thank you so much for uh, devoting the time to hop on it and share this knowledge. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure and privilege. And um, you have an awesome day. And if you ever want more, uh, there's so much stuff about your name I didn't even go into, man. So if you want an in-depth reading, Ivan, let me know. Awesome. and we'll, we'll go more in-depth on this, all right? Awesome. And, um, yes. Thanks, Darius. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Peace. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>